with last name i give you something and uh, address also i give you so what are you going to do you are going to do the select query you are going to first of all uh, log into the database then you are going to run the select query and you are going to put the filter criteria saying that username has to be asad and address has to be this employee number has to be maybe 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 something just you have to run through the unique things right otherwise if i just say that uh, uh, i'm i'm looking for people in who live in america and uh, whose name is parikshit do you think i'm going to get uh, only one parikshit no maybe i will end up getting thousands of parikshit right so i have to give some so i have while giving the filter criteria uh, while running any select query i have to make sure that i am i am giving enough filtration criteria to get the unique record unique record is parikshit chahal maybe his ssn number do you think there will be any other parikshit chahal with the same ssn number no no right so that means ssn number makes him unique or maybe farhana do you think there will be other, any other farhana with the same ssn number with the same date of birth no so that means if i have to get the information about farhana if i provide ssn information and maybe date of birth information these kind of information i will get the unique record right so that is the way to query a database but at the same time in order to perform this activity you have to be in front of your computer you have to be in a position to access the data database directly but do you think everyone in this world will have the access to your database no right you are you are working in bank of america sitting in your cubicle you have access to their internal system but i am a customer i don't have access to their internal system how can i find if i have to find something related to, to the you know employees or related to my bank account and all those things so how is that thing decided so first of all bank of america has to decide what kind of information they want to share with me right they cannot be sharing all the you know I, I, all the employee information with me if i am someone outsider and i want to know about the every bank of america employee and who what is their name what is their phone number what is their ssn number they will not share it with me right they will share it only if i am authorized to get it if i if if i have the you no know, uh, strong reason why i want this information okay forget about that that thing i don't want to get into that uh, discussion but yeah so uh, the, uh, the the thing which i want to explain here is that if i ha- i i need any kind of information internal information but i am the outsider how can i get it you have to host it somewhere right okay uh, i think you are not correctly understanding my explanation let it, let me put it this way so not not many of the people many of you are already this replying but i think farhana kruti and parikshita are talking so okay let me ask you one question so if i uh, if 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 i you know if i want you to share any document with me right which is there in your laptop for example there is a a uh, latest cv which you have prepared and i want you to share that uh, document with me so either you can send the email okay so that is the easy solution but if you don't have my email id and i am not giving you my email id so uh, how can you share this document with me what what can be the other way to make that document available for me we are working in the same environment i can put it in a shared drive and you can have access from there if that makes sense. that's the perfect answer right so if we are working in the same environment you can put it on the network location or any shared location or in google drive dropbox these kind of things and you will share that link with me and i will be able to access it right same thing if there is anything on the database and i want to share this information with someone who is outside so i have to provide a link what kind of link a web link what kind of web link a web link which understand what is exactly the customer's query what is 
exactly the information which customer is looking for so that means if i am developing a kind of online service which can directly understand customer's requirement and fetch the record from database that will be the web service right so that means simply there is a front end application wherein you have the you know employee number employee name get information three only three options are there i am giving you the example of the simplest application in the world you open a page you get only three options first is employee name employee number get information so you have to provide employee name enter employee number rest but get information you will get the information about that employee right so that means this particular front end is a application maybe you can name it whatever you want to you can say this is a employee information application or something like that and that particular application is going to access my database through a web service in the back end but the front end user he will never understand it he is not going to you know get the exposure of the web service the same way as when when i when i explained you that you know you are going to bank and you are swiping your card you are getting money there are a lot of transactions happening in the back end there are thousands of transactions happening in the back end but you don't even get the idea about it as a as a user you will just see okay your balance is debited or credited or you get the cash right have you ever got to know what exactly happened in the back end which particular database got updated which particular service was used which part particular service was down or which particular service was up as a user have you ever got that information no because you don't need to correct so it is right to say that web services are the online services or functions or i will say methods functions or i would say simple applications hosted online to access any remote application or database so does this statement make sense to you if you have any question please ask me okay i assume you understand it okay let me take it for the okay so till this point we have already understood that web service is a kind of online link through which you can access any other remotely available application or remotely available database one second kya hua
okay okay guys sorry so yeah i was asking that you know uh, this statement so web service are actually the methods or functions or some application which are hosted online for the users so that they can access it and connect to the remotely available application or database let me give you one more example and then we'll move forward the simplest example to understand this the statement is all of you have must have used the google maps right google maps are basically the apis the apis or the web services basically the web services which are taking your information which you are feeding into it for example you want to go from new york to maybe manhattan to uh, jersey city right so your from location is manhattan to location is jersey city street number or whatever you you will put it there so uh, google uh, web service is going to consume that information and it is going to query its database and it is going to return you the route map maybe it will say okay 5 kilometers 5 miles or 10 kilometers 10 miles 5 minutes 10 minutes or whatever or if you are you know asking it you uh, know i want the uh, train option so it will return the train option if you want the bus option it will return the bus option it will, if you have if you want the cab information it will return the cab information so that means all that information basically is stored somewhere it is already stored somewhere you are just accessing it through your web service which can be your you know google map or maybe simple google or anything okay let me uh, go further Okay. So I think we are clear now. So whenever we talk about web service, so okay so this is a very common statement which is used for any web service or the web services i would say why all the systems today in the real world are basically based on this concept enterprise interface architecture right so i'll explain you what is enterprise interface architecture so uh, as a, when we talked about that example of you know um, amazon that you are basically you know you are uh, just uh, logging into the amazon and then you are looking for maybe nike shoes so amazon is connected to the nike and then uh, you know you like some shoes you place the order so uh, and you make the payment through chase account so maybe that means nike is connected to chase right and then uh, you are uh, uh, you know shipping is being uh, taken care by fedex so that means nike and amazon they are connecting to fedex and maybe fedex is not able to deliver in in, uh, in your area so fedex basically hands over that to usps so now fedex usps 
Amazon, Nike, they are connected with USPS directly about your information. So finally, when USPS reaches your doorsteps, delivers it, so all those you know, application or all those parties, whatever are involved, so they are going to get the confirmation that this particular package, which was ordered by XYZ customer, has been delivered. So Nike will send the confirmation to Amazon and Amazon will send the confirmation to you that shipping has been done. Right? That's how it, it, it works, correct? So Nike, Amazon, FedEx, USPS, they are all enterprises, right? When they are different enterprises are connected in or interlinked, so we call it an interface. So there has to be an interface, right? You understand interface, right? When those, there are two application or application and database, there are two entities when they are linked together. So there has to be an interface which actually links them. So interface means a link between to application, application and database, database and database, or two entities in simple. When two entities are linked, there has to be interface between them. So that means <clears throat> when multiple applications are linked in an enterprise, those that linkage is achieved through web services. And why do we use web service for that one? Because of this reason. I'll explain you the reason. I gave you so many examples right now that you know there are different companies which are getting linked to perform a very simple transaction, right? So there are chances that uh, Amazon code is written in Java. There are chances that uh, Nike software code is written in .NET. There are chances that FedEx uh, software code is written in mainframe. And there are chances that USPS code is written in maybe, you know, C sharp or something C++. So these all systems can be, from software perspective, they can be different types of platform. So when I connect two platforms, I have to either make sure that they are same. Like I can connect Java application with Java application if I directly want to connect them. But if I am using web service to to bring a, to to create a link between those two applications, then I don't care about the uh, software platform of those application because my web services will always take the inputs in shape of either XML or JSON or flat file or any kind of flat or file format. So they don't care about whether your application is written in Java or .NET or whatever. So they are just the messengers. They are taking information from one system, delivering it to other system, fetching the information from there, delivering it, with, delivering it to you. That's all what they do. <coughs> Okay, so I'll just read out this statement. Modern day business application use variety of the programming platforms to develop the web based application. Some application may be developed in Java, others are in .NET, while others in Angular, JS, Node Java, .js, etc. Most often that not the heterogeneous application needs some sort of communication to happen between them. Heterogeneous means what? That they are all different. They are not all Java all .NET, all, you know, Angular or something. So they are all heterogeneous application and they are connecting through a common channel that is called as web service. You got it? So I'm actually going to uh, share this document. I have uh, created this document for you. So uh, whatever I have explained till now, so maybe in a different language or maybe in a simpler language, same thing is explained in this document. So you can go through it and then I expect you to, uh, you know, send me the queries about this document because I can understand that this is the first time for most of the people who are even listening about the web services. So I don't expect you to understand 100% what I'm explaining, but at least you get that basic understanding what exactly we are talk going to talk about, what exactly we are going to test, what exactly is the context of this particular session. So you got that understanding. And now when you go through this document once, twice or thrice, then you will surely will have some questions. And I want you to ask me those questions so as to strengthen your understanding about this topic. You got it? Okay. Yes.
so here i have shown you know in a very base uh, you know very simplest possible way how this web service basically works so there is going to be a client client means any kind of system your maybe your mobile phone maybe your desktop maybe your laptop and there has you have to be connected to the internet in order to access the service so what is what exactly are you going to do you are going to place a request to the server and this that server is going to fetch the information as per your request and after it, it fetches that information it is going to send a response that is the response which you are looking for this is exactly what is happening in the back end whenever any web service works you got it okay so from this kind of this diagram you must have understood that client is sending something to server server is fetching something from somewhere and finally it is sending something back to the client and client is happy now because he got whatever he is looking for so this this communication is happening through web service but this communication has to happen in any specific file format or any specific language so that is when xml json these kind of file formats come into picture right so uh, i assume that everyone among us we are talking in the session we all have at least heard about xml i don't want you to be master in xml but at least you know what is xml right so it is just a file format uh, you know a kind of machine based file format wherein uh, whenever one information one application is connected to the other application so it is sending its message so that message has to be in any specific format so one of those formats is xml which is widely used second format which is most commonly used is json j s o n okay and uh, there are other uh, file formats also for example flat file text file right so canonical files but that is not something which is commonly used so the most commonly used file format for this kind of communication is only xml and json j s o n okay, okay. so here you know, just go through those this document it will it is very beautiful thing which will explain you about the basics even if you don't have the understanding of xml you know you don't have the understanding of the web services you just go through this document it will explain you everything okay web service is a software model which is designed to perform certain set of tasks uh, you know i explained you the task all the operations right and this is how they are going to perform their task and then there is something these, these are see uh, i explained you the basics in a very very simplest language right now you understand it but when you are going to really work in this environment on on or on this you know on this technology so there are surely going to be some technical words which are going to be used right so maybe all of all of you are must be really already working somewhere in some sector in some industry so if you explain me about that industry maybe you explain in in a very simplest uh, manner that i understand it but if i really uh, try to do what you are doing maybe i will not be able to do it that easily the way you are doing it because you are quite aware about you are quite you know comfortable with the day to day use of those technical words which you use in your life but i am not in the same way there are going to be some technical words related to the web service related to the qa related to the to the software testing related to the software development so you have to actually every day you know whenever you are coming uh, through those words whenever you are coming across those words you have you just have to familiarize yourself with those words so that you understand it and you you know put them in use so that you know when you are really joining some company they should not be saying okay you you are listening to those words for the first time <laughs> right they should feel that yeah you know it okay so rpc is one of those uh, technical jargons which is going to be used in case of web services so rpc means remote procedure calls procedure you know operations operations you know delete insert you know fetch and uh, update so if you are sitting in uh, sitting at your home accessing your you know facebook application updating your profile through your mobile that means you are remotely doing it you are not going to the facebook office to get your 
profile updated right so that means you are remotely making that procedure call so that means rpc remote procedure call every time whenever you are using any web service it is going to be rpc these requests are made through what is known as remote procedure call rpc calls are made to methods which are hosted by the relevant web services is this statement clear to you it should be very much clear right yes something about xml those file formats okay let me uh, come to the next topic basically about the web service again we already spoke about the website what is the web service what, what uh, now okay uh, yeah let's go here so at least we are clear with this statement what is a web service why do we need them i think we are clear with this also why do we need them because we are whenever we are performing any kind of operation remotely we need some kind of mechanism to perform those application and why do we use the web service because web service is something which which will enable me to remotely connect to my application or de or desktop or maybe um, uh, to the database to fetch the information which i am looking for and second most important thing or most important advantage which web service is providing to me is that i can connect java application with dot net application dot net application with mainframe application mainframe application with <laughs> maybe uh, sql database or oracle database i don't even care about it i don't have to actually right it's it's kind of like if if i uh, i'm the i'm the person if i speak uh, speak english but uh, you don't speak english you speak spanish do you think you, we will be able to talk no we need some kind of translator right if i if i speak hindi you speak uh, bengali do you think I, we will be able to talk either you have to understand hindi or i have to understand bengali right so we need some kind of translation system so the web service provides us that kind of translation in between so it is a middleman who will be listening to me understanding what i am trying to explain in my language it will explain that same thing to the to the destination system and it will fetch the information whatever source system is asking for it will again translate it right you are spanish i am you know english speaking person i, I if i am asking you uh what is your address in english you don't understand that so web service will explain you know translate my message into spanish ask you about your address fetch that in address detail in spanish it will again convert it into english and it will provide it to me so now i have your address in english you got it so this is why we need it because it makes it makes my application interface platform independent like i don't even care about the platforms like whether they are java platform dot net platform anything i don't care how are they developed okay obviously someone just talked about uh, postman and uh, maybe soap ui and all those things so those are the tools to test it but before we test anything we have to develop it right if i ask you to test a car for me tesla car for me but i don't have car with me do you think you will be able to test it no you need whatever i am asking you to test you need that thing at least right same thing if i am asking you to test me piece of code right you need that the access to the code first of all to make sure that you you are at least able to do something on that code then you will be testing it and sharing your results with me right same thing goes here so web service are developed by you know there are lot of tools web methods ibm broker Tibco, 
and uh, open source java open source dot net okay these are some of the common methods to develop those web services and and i as i explained you that uh, web service is something which is sitting in between it's a it's a middle man it's a middle middle thing it's a middle where we also call okay whenever anyone ask you what is a web service the first statement should be web, web service is a middle where this should be a first statement okay so that means middleware is a, is is a person or is a, a system or is anything which is sitting in middle and translating the messages and you know making sure that communication is happening in the expected manner right so if i want to develop that middleware what are the things which i need to take into consideration simple example i just gave you that i want your uh, i want i want your maybe you know uh, wait a second someone text i can't hear you ruksana you can't hear me now is fine that's fine okay i'm sorry i just saw your message okay i can see there are a lot of new people also joined in between deepthi faisal farhana ruti liton okay so <clears throat> yeah i was just saying i want you to answer me this question anyone i just gave you the example that of the spanish language that i am a english speaking person i don't understand spanish i want to i want to you know develop a system which can understand me and explain a spanish person what i'm asking for and that system should also be capable enough to understand the answer which that person is giving and explain the same thing to me so what exactly do i need to consider while developing this system like the translator you know like the special tools that's it that that's that perfect yeah that is exactly what i was looking for i need a translator if i don't have translator do you think i'll be able to do it no i will not be able to do it. so that is your first step that you need a translator second thing you need a translator so what is the requirement that translator should understand how many languages both languages both languages so my requirement is translator my requirement is knowledge about both languages right so these are my requirements and if i have both those things i will just you know bring that person or bring that system or start using it so that becomes my web service okay so it this this example was just to make you understand so we don't have any such web service in real sense that you know sits between two person and makes them talk to each other no it's just the you know fictional kind of example just to make you understand so i will be giving such examples don't take them seriously that is <laughs> this is not you know a real time example but yeah real time example is google api maybe facebook maybe location you know gaming things so those are the real time examples okay anyways so as uh, some of you just answered that uh, so while developing the web service we need to know that uh, what exactly we are trying to do and second is the requirement what is our requirement and then we have tools we can develop this see tool selection is the last thing to do before tool selection you need to know what exactly you are going to do right so it is same as if i say that you have to come from uh, new york to you know new york to new jersey or if i just say that you have to travel you can't decide how will you travel by your car by train by flight by bus by anything unless i tell you where you are going if i am telling you okay you have to go from new york to phoenix so you will say okay it is better to travel by air if i am telling you you have to travel from new york to new jersey you will say okay i'll go by car if you have to try tell you that you you are going from new york to new york like inside new york only you are traveling so you will say it is better to go by train 
right so that means those tool selection is a secondary thing first you need to understand what exactly you are going to do then you will then there will be the development team who will uh, decide whether they want to use the web methods web methods or they want to use the ibm broker they want to use tipco they want to use any op open source java they want to use open source dot net whatever they want to use you don't care the only thing which you care about is that they are developing the web service making that web service available to you so that you can test it right why to test them it's a simple question it's not about web service it's not about software it's not about it it is a very generic question any product or service which is being released to the market why do you need to test it to make sure it working it is it is supposed to be correct to make sure that it is working as it is supposed to to make sure whether it is in line with the requirements or not to make sure whether it is giving the expected results or not and that is what we call testing if if i am asking you guys a very simple question before you know starting your interview what is software testing your simplest answer will be software testing is just to make sure whether we are getting the expected result for the you know uh, design scenarios or not you have a list of scenarios or use cases you have expected result list also so your testing is just to make sure that the expected result is matching with actual result if your expected result is completely equal to actual result your testing is successful if there is a deviation between your expected result and actual result do you think your testing is successful no no as simple as it is ओके अगला क्या है ओके हाउ टू टेस्ट देम सेम थिंग आई आई आज दिस क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री हाउ टू डेवलप देम सो यू सेड फर्स्ट यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट एग्जैक्टली यू आर ट्राइंग टू डेवलप एंड देन नेक्स्ट थिंग इज दैट यू आर गोइंग टू सिलेक्ट अ टूल राइट सेम थिंग गोज हेयर हाउ टू टेस्ट देम हाउ टू टेस्ट देम first of all you need to understand what exactly are you going to test right you need to know the requirement you need to know the expected result and then you will generate the actual result and compare your actual and expected result and inform me whether your testing was successful or not right. now how to test them is your tool selection there is something called as soap ui there is something called as postman there is something called as tipco sorry tosca there is something called as uh persoft this something called as see elisa there is something called as selenium rest a short framework and etc okay so these are all the tools which you can use to do what perform the web service testing okay now i'll quickly move to the types of web services i hope you guys can at least hear me right because i am not un, uh, hearing anyone talk to me maybe you don't like me i'm not teaching good <laughs> okay 
Assad. These people they don't want to talk, man. We are just listening you. Okay. Naeem, can you hear me? I, I didn't hear you speaking. Naeem? Naeem, are you there? No? Okay. Asad, are you there? Are you there? Please talk, guys. Nobody is there. <laughs> this session is for you. I'm not. I am not giving a lecture for myself. <laughs> no, yeah, we can hear you. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. We are okay. with you. Thank God. <laughs> Thank you. So, <laughs> see, this is not a class. I am not. We are not in a school or college that you know. I am teaching you something. I am doing my job. <laughs> yeah, I know. But if we are all together, all talk together, it's going to be mess. So we are better quiet. Right. So you need to understand. This is a very professional kind of thing which we are doing. You guys are going to get the job, or some of you already have jobs. For example, this guy Naeem, he's already placed somewhere, and maybe a couple of others, they're already working. So, I'm doing whatever I'm explaining for you know, it, it is going to help you in your day to day job. So, you need it's better that you pay, pay the attention and you know, ask me the question that will that is going to help you, otherwise, you will struggle. It's up to you, okay. So, where was I was here at this step? Uh, types of web services. So, mainly they are br broadly they are classified into two categories soap based web service and restful web services. I hope you guys have already heard about those two types. <clears throat> okay. I'll just explain it on a high level. One second, please, please hold on. Okay, hi. Actually, there was some background noise. I just wanted to you know, make sure that there is no disturbance. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I was saying that there are two types of web services. First is SOAP based. Second is RESTful APIs. We also call them REST. APIs. Okay. So SOAP based service, this is the full form of SOAP, it's simple object access protocol. Okay, so SOAP is known as a transport independent messaging protocol. SOAP is based on transferring XML data as SOAP messages. Each message has something which is known as XML document. Only structure of the XML document follows a specific SOAP pattern but not the content. So what does this statement mean? So, this statement means that so there there is something called as soap based web services so based web services means that there are certain web services which are going to be based on soap soap is simple object access protocol so all of you understand what is the protocol right so in order to perform any job any job in this world 
you have a defined protocol protocol means a defined set of rules which you have to follow to to to, to perform the job right same thing when we are talking about the soap based web services that means this soap design has to follow some kind of defined protocol or defined set of rules and what are those defined set of rules that they have to transport message in a defined way right and that's what i'm saying so whenever there is a soap based web service we have front end front end you are you know providing some information trying to perform any operation any operation or out of the operation which i already explained so there will be a soap message which will be getting constructed by the web service that message will be sent to the destination system the destination system will respond to that message with the results your soap based web service will capture that response and again return the same response to the front end and you will get the result of what exactly you were looking for right so that message is called as soap message and soap message body can be anything body can be xml it can be maybe json but it will always follow a defined structure that means it will always have a soap header it will have a soap body it will have a soap envelope right i'll show you exactly what how it looks like so this is one of the web service for addition addition of two numbers number a number b if i'm just putting 8 plus 10 what should be the answer should be 18 because 8 plus 10 is 18 forget about the result just look at the structure of the xml so it has soap envelope if it has soap header it has soap body and it has the operation what operation it is performing the name of the operation is addition so addition can you increase the size of the font can you increase the size of the font it's very small increasing the size of font okay <laughs> don't have option do that but uh, let me try There is a zoom in option somewhere. I don't know where is it. No, actually, this application is not providing me the option of zooming it in. So I can okay. probably what I can do is I can you know I can copy this message here. Sample message I can see. Okay, now is it better? Hey, yeah. listen. You can use the magnifying glass, so that will make your screen bigger. No, no. I know that makes, but the, on that application, it there is no magnifying glass. It is only on the document. Okay, so here is it. Okay, so the message will always be constructed like this when it is a SOAP based service. It's not REST based service. I'm talking about SOAP, not REST. Bear in mind. it is always going to have the soap envelope it is always going to have the soap header it is always going to have the soap body so let me give you the layman kind of example a very gen generic kind of example if you are going to usps office to deliver a package you want to send that package from new york to arizona so what are you going to do you are going to share the address where you are going to send that package to they are going to put your stuff whatever the stuff you want to send it you are going they are going to pack it in an envelope they are going to you know put some ticket on it 
and then they are going to you know paste it with a glue or something and they are going to you know they are going to basically follow the standard practice it does not matter to usps whether you are sending a, a letter or a, some kind of item or anything so they are uh, you know their way of sending it the way of packaging it their way of you know delivering it will always remain same so that is what i am trying to explain you here in this message you are going to perform an addition operation addition is going to make sure that you are provide you are providing two numbers number a number b and when you are providing two numbers and you know clicking on the execute button it is going to add those two numbers and return you the result if it is 8 plus 8 it is going to be 16 but forget about 8 plus 8 just look at the structure of the xml this is the soap based soap based message an xml message which is being sent like this okay it is being sent like this so this uh, tool which i was showing this is soap ui by the way i will explain it later what is soap ui and how to use soap ui um, but i opened it just to uh, you know show you how the real xmls look like okay so here is what the soap message consists of each soap, soap document needs to have the root element that is envelope then they will divide it into two part header and next is body right same thing is explained here if you read it out same thing is explained here right the body will contain the actual message so what is there in the body body has name of the operation add integer a integer b 10 and 8 and body close that means this particular message is carrying the information about two numbers that is it it this message is not carrying anything else so here you have ended it okay so diagram below shows the example of the communication via soap so again same communication there is going to be so this code are given to you for testing or you have to write this one second this code which code this the whatever i pasted here this one right so you have to write those or is given to you no. by the developer no. no this is not a code first of all this is a message this is a message and here you are providing the inputs so whenever you are testing any web service so you have to ask your developer for the details about the web service that means the url if you don't have the url you cannot test it so the first requirement is url second requirement is sample messages so you need to ask your developer for sample request and sample response so this is the sample request so he is going to provide you the only thing which you need to do is to fill in data he is not going to give you the data he is going to give you the structure only right did i answer your question yeah thank you so here it has explained how is the structure how is the communication same there is a client there is a server client is sending a message to the server server is fetching the response from somewhere server is returning the message web service i have just listed down the web service advantages also which we already talked about so the first and the foremost advantage is that we now we are exposing any big business functionality on the network anyone can use it it's not something which is only hosted in my system it is it is as good as putting something on the shared drive and asking anyone to use it second is interoperability about um, among this uh, application interoperability means that you don't need to worry about the uh, you know uh, which code the application is written in it can be java it can be dot net so web services do not care they can connect any applications so that is called interoperability then standardized protocol which everybody understands so they always have a standardized protocol which everyone understands that's it reduction in the cost of the communication so when you are using the web service it is very simple implementation 
it's a simplest possible way to make your data available online that's it okay so this was about the soap based services and uh, let me quickly tell you about the rest there is a lot to talk about the rest but in this session today we will talk about only basic things so that in the following session when you so yeah um, the, the the expectation would be that you know after this session till the next session when we'll meet again you'll have to at least go through this document and do some kind of research online also to understand it right it because it's it's for as i already said it's for your sake it's not i'm not a teacher in any any class or you know any school or any college that i'm doing my job whatever i'm doing it i'm doing it for you okay so you have to ask me more question to make sure that your understanding is better so if i have the answers i will give you if i don't have the answers i will try to search it online for you and i will try to help you out okay so restful apis are something where, wherein we are not basically following this this kind of protocols right so rest uh, do we have that one second I hate my keyboard. Check transfer architecture. Okay, so REST is basically a form of architecture, which is called as representational state transfer architecture, right? SOAP is a protocol. So there, this is a very common question in almost every interview whenever they talk about the web services. they always ask what is the difference between rest and soap the very first there are a lot of differences for sure which some of which i have already explained some of which we will be surely going through in the further lectures but the very first answer or very first point to this question is that rest is a form of architecture rest is an architecture soap is not an architecture soap is a protocol so there is a difference between architecture and protocol right so next things are soap has a defined way of sending the message rest does not have that kind of you know a way to send the message then there are a bunch of more you know things oh yeah yeah and uh, i did not talk much about rest today because of the time constraint because soap is something which is uh, quite vast in itself so first i want to cover the soap and then we i want to move towards the rest but yeah on high level so the way soap is going to follow those you know four operations so rest is also going to follow those defined set of the operation just like soap but here we have the defined name for them in soap we don't have the defined name for them in soap if we have to do a select operation we just you know uh, send the soap based message wherein we are looking for the information and we'll get the information or else if we are trying to insert something new in the database we will send it in sh in shape of xml and we'll perform that operation right the same way we have in the database but uh, in the restful apis what is going to happen you are going to have the defined methods okay so it is going to have the defined method yeah, define method to search define method to perform the operation right and when you are see this is the this is the soap based project which i have opened in my screen right now i don't see any uh, option of selecting what is the method which i want to perform because this is the soap soap based service soap based service 
even if i'm doing fetch i'm doing delete i'm doing update i'm doing insert doesn't matter everything i need to put in shape of the xml and i need to press this execute button and i will get the answer right but in rest but I there is question yeah how do but, you know where you have to put input data how do i know what like in this message where you have to input data how do you know like so what is the process for that okay if i open this one let me open this divide and let me so this is the message sample message which developer gave me okay so this is the soap envelope this is the soap header so body this is the operation name of the operation here is a question mark here is a question mark here the body closes here the body closes here the operation closes here the envelope closes so what do you think where can i provide the information input information for now understanding from that you have to put the information that question mark but is it always the question mark yes it will always be like this so whenever your developer is providing you a sample message he has to tell you what fields are you going to test so your requirement document is going to tell you what all are the optional and what all are the mandatory parameters right whenever you are filling any form you know that right whenever you are filling any form online so you have optional and mandatory parameters is it is it uh, is it mandatory for you to fill everything in that form no you only fill the mandatory parameter you just leave the optional parameters and you just go further with your transaction same thing when you are testing any real web service you are going to get the requirements that requirement is going to tell you what are your input parameters additionally it is going to tell you what will your input parameters look like whether it has to be integer whether it has to be character so if you think that you know here i am providing 19 plus 20 so what will be the answer 39 right one point something because oh, it's sorry. division oh sorry uh, no no it's a divide oh, sorry okay if i am providing 12 20 by 2 so what will be the answer it should be 10 it should be 10 right but if i provide 20 abc divide by 2 what will i get error message error yeah. let's do it let's provide 2 here run this i got the answer 10 now let me provide a c v i got such a big error message why because this field is expecting only an integer input i cannot provide anything other than integer so that means this is a negative test case which i just performed my requirement says that this input uh, parameters needs to be an integer but i i provided characters and it failed and that was the expected behavior correct Are you following what I explained? Do you have to? Do you have to write test cases for these as well, or you don't have to? Obviously, you have to write the test case for this as well. The, the first test case for this one will be eight plus ten. Expected result is eighteen. Actual result is eighteen. Your test case passed. Uh, you know, second test case is eight a plus ten b. Expected result is error. Actual result is error. Your test case passed. Maybe. another case is 8.2 plus 10.3 now you don't know whether it uh, you know okay let's do that 8.3 plus 10.2 or 10.2 yeah so it should be 18.5 but i'm not getting 18.5 i'm getting the error response why i'm getting the error response because Due my input lot, parameter right? has to be only integer it does not handle the decimals if i'm sending the integers i will get the answer if i'm sending the decimals i will not get the answer okay so this is a test case for you right so you are not going to get 
those kind of simple web services to test i'm just giving the basic example just to understand what exactly are you going to do and how exactly are you going to perform the operations how exactly are you going to create the test cases so the simple test so simple uh, you already created three test cases for this operation only one operation you created three test cases similarly for add divide multiply subtract you can create three 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 into four twelve test cases if this is a calculator is an application so i can directly write 12 test cases for it first test case 8 plus 10 second test case 8a plus 10b third test case 8 8.3 plus 10.3 i know the expected result for each of them and i can just compare the expected result and the actual result and i can inform my developer and the project team whether the you know application is successful it's not whatever okay so uh I just give, wanted to give you the high level idea about this uh, REST API here, but we will talk about it in detail in the next session. Okay. So this document, let me forward it to you. So I think everyone is in copied in this email, right? okay you guys are supposed to go through this document once and you have to inform me what you understood what you did not understood if you have any question let me know then next session i will make you practice this one so what and meanwhile what you can do is you know just you can go online or go online and search for soap ui free download when you go to this link so there are two options soap ui pro soap ui open source you have to go for the open source just download this install it that's it okay let me share this link with you so the most company use open source so they also pay pay for it they, they use open source most company And then we will talk about the projects, right? The sample projects and how to build the test cases, everything. We will talk about that. First, you have to download this thing and at least should be able to run these kind of operations, right? How to perform this, how to perform this. So then we will talk about how to create the test cases and how to generate the report. Okay. Okay, I think that should be it for today. Uh, Asad, are you there? Can you hear me? I think he's not. Okay.
so uh, everyone i think uh, today's session was uh, a bit helpful for you so i was just uh, you know trying to make you understand uh, what are the web services how can we test it and uh, today we mostly talked about the soap based web services so restful services we talk in the next session and we in the next session also we will see how to execute the web services and how to build the test cases out of it but for today session i just want you to go through the document again and you to have the basic understanding of the web services first so that in future if anyone is talking about the web service in front of you you should be at least able to understand and you should be able to respond you should be able to discuss on it right any questions Do we have any questions from anyone? Uh, hi, Prashant. I'm Shukla speaking. Hey, hi, Shukla. How are you? Fine, Prashant. I know this part, but uh, I am facing some problem only for database connection. And then the Oracle is it is possible connected for the SOAP UI or not only for MySQL? Because I don't know the MySQL, but I know the Oracle. Okay. So, what are you uh, using? Are you using SOAP UI or using? Yeah, SOAP UI, uh, SOAP UI, SOAP UI. Yeah, SOAP UI yeah, and then SOAP UI register. Okay. So, your project, are you already in project or you are? No, 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 no. I'm not in the project. But uh, sometimes interview people, they are asking lots of questions. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's why I, I try my own way, but I didn't connect it for the Oracle. Okay. Okay, that we can talk it. about that. So that is basically yeah. the J JDBC connectivity. So currently, I know I know the JDBC connector, but uh, I try my own way. But uh, <laughs> I'm <pretty. laughs> okay. So can, we, we can we can try that because this is my op uh, look, This is my personal laptop here. We don't have any. Mm -hmm. I don't have any you know, connection. Uh, the open connection for the database which I my, can connect. My to. question is: It is possible for the Oracle connection? Huh? It, it is. is it is possible. It is possible. Okay, okay. It is okay, possible okay. for mm -hmm. Oracle. It is possible for all type of databases. Yeah, except, yeah, yeah, yeah. Except DB2. You cannot connect to DB2. DB2 is basically uh, it's a legacy database which I is connected know. to the mainframe. No need for the DB2. But I need a Oracle. That's I need your help. Thank you, Prashant. For, yeah. yeah, or actually, you can connect and uh, mm -hmm. you, you can also have a Java plugin. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Everything is fit for my machine, no problem. Only for database connection in SOPI is that. So. Okay. Okay, so we can talk about that. And uh, mm -hmm. for today's session, we I, I think it was just a very high level uh, you know, overview of the SOAP services and all those things. So I hope it was you know helpful for you guys so okay uh thank you go through this document and let me know if you have any questions so shukla we can connect maybe later and uh, we'll see how to you know yeah uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah method is better yeah okay. yeah okay thank you okay, thank you Bye. take care Okay, thank you, everyone. You can disconnect. Asad, are you still there? Or uh, you can close the session. Okay. Thank you, Prashant, very much. Yeah. Thank you.